Hello, family and friends of Grace Church. Good to be with you again today. I'm hoping that you all are doing well, enjoying the peace of God, the presence of God, as well as his provision in your lives during this season that we find ourselves in. Uh, inviting you to participate and to enjoy our worship service this morning. But before we get into that, I just want to also take a moment and ask you to call some friends, some relatives, some neighbors, invite them to log on together with you and, and, and receive the message as well today. Also, again, just a great, a great shout out to all of you for being so faithful with your financial support, your tithe and offerings keep coming in. And it's, it's such a blessing. And also not just the the offerings that are coming in, but various notes that you're sending along with the offerings that you're sending in. It's a words of encouragement, words of affirmation, and really appreciate it. And it means a lot to me. And I appreciate your heart, love you, and we're looking forward to being together real soon. Until then, you enjoy this worship in your living room. And I'll be right back after the worship with a message for today. God bless you.
The moment you called my name, you pulled me out of the darkness, and you gave me a promise to never thirst again. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord of the earth in the beauty of his holiness. The beauty of his holiness. Sing to the Lord song sing to the Lord oh my soul in the wonders of his mighty head the wonders of his mighty head great is the Lord we cry great to be praised Let every nation rise and say, our God reigns, our God reigns. Sing to the Lord a new song, worship the Lord.
his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children In Titus chapter 2, verse 12, is a verse that not many of us are all that familiar with, but we're instructed in that particular verse, we are instructed to live soberly, meaning, it's not, not talking anything about uh, being intoxicated with alcohol, but, but to live soberly, and that meaning of that is, is that as recipients of God's grace, we are to act in a responsible manner, we are to be in self-control and in full possession of intellectual and emotional faculties at all times. So our message today is entitled, Elevate Our Thinking. 
In the season that we're in, there's a lot of thought. I hear a lot of comments, uh, statements being made. I just can't wait to get back to normal. Then other people are talking about looking forward to talking about a new normal. So we're going to talk about that today and, and really discuss, is that really what we want? Do we want to go back to normal or do, are we looking forward to a new normal? So in elevating our thinking, the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 55, I'm going to read uh, verse six through nine from the New Living Translation. It reads like this. It says, seek the Lord while he Seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on him now while he is near. Let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to the Lord for he will forgive generously. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So God's thoughts being higher than our thoughts. And my challenge today in the message for today is how we can go about elevating our thinking to a higher level and, and, and possibly go beyond the idea or the mentality that I'm just looking forward to things getting back to normal. So in elevating our thoughts and in being instructed to uh, banish the thoughts of doing wrong in forsaking the unrighteous thoughts and in elevating our thinking, it's important to understand that we can, we can never live better than what we are thinking. So it's, it's really, it's an important principle to, uh, to, uh, to live soberly and to be in full possession of our intellectual and emotional faculties at all times. And so when I hear people saying, I can't wait to get back to normal or the opposite side of that, you're saying, looking forward to a new norm. Let's just reflect on that for a few moments this morning. Both going back to normal looking forward to a new normal, when I stop and think about it, both of them sound really, really bland. Sounds like vanilla with no toppings. It's just, everything's vanilla. Sounds like a color palette with just various shades of gray. That's it. There's nothing else. There's, no, there's nothing beautiful about it. And so, normal. So I pulled out the dictionary and just looked up the word normal. And it means conforming. It means to conform with an accepted standard or norm. And so immediately when I read that, conforming with an accepted standard or norm, there's something about the word conforming to that I find my innermost being rebelling to. Uh, just the idea of being told what I must conform to. It, it also is defined as average in intelligence. Now who wants to be known as average in intelligence? I mean, we all wanna be better than average, right? It also refers to the usual state, the usual amount, or the usual routine. What's for dinner? The normal. What was the price? The normal. What are we going to do this weekend? The normal. You know, it's really, really bland, but yet so many people are saying, I just want to get back to normal. So my question is, to provoke your thinking, is uh, just exactly what is your point of reference when you're talking about getting back to normal? You know, whose norm are you referring to? Do you really want to get back to the way it was? I'll be honest with you, I'm enjoying leaving my house, getting on the ramp to enter onto 222 South, and basically don't even need to look in my mirror because there's, <laughs> there's no traffic. Uh, the norm was you had to be very careful. You really had to negotiate it. You know, you had to really be experienced driver to just, you know, to continue to get in the flow of traffic. And so, and I know that's not realistic. I think it's always going to stay like that, but it really is nice. My mother-in-law is uh, in her, just turned 90 years old at the end of last year. And she said it's stage in life where my wife Nancy and her sisters are providing care for her in her home. So at least once a week, Nancy's driving to New Jersey. Sometimes I'll go with her. But the idea of going uh, 
down to Pittman, New Jersey. Right now, it takes like an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes. Uh, back to normal, that can be an hour and 45 minutes. That can be two hours, depending on the traffic. So in that sense, not looking forward to going back to normal. I like the way it is right now with being able to get on the highway, get from point A to point B, and there's no stressors. You can just go. Again, not realistic, but it's ideal. So when you're saying, I want to get back to normal, do you want to get back to the, the, the acceptable standard? You want to get back to average? You want to get back to the usual state, the way things were, the usual routines? Uh, so the question again is, what is your point of reference? Is it the way that you were raised? You know, is it back to, uh, you, you think that the way you were raised is, is, is normal? Well, it may be normal to you, but it may not be normal to other people. And so we have to be very careful when we're saying, I just want things to be normal again. Some people, you know, say, I want to get back to normal. Do you really want to get back to your negative way of thinking? You want to get back to complaining about the traffic, complaining about the hurried schedule, the tight schedule, the just going from one event to another event with no breaks in between, just completely exhausted at the end of the day, day in and day out. So... This is a perfect time. This is the perfect time to unlearn the point of references that we refer to when we say we, we, we want things to be normal or we're looking for a new norm. And it's a perfect time for, for us to be set free from all the things in our life that we don't need and, and to allow this season in our life to have a transformation taking place on the inside, letting God do a work from the inside out, Let, letting go of the old normal and not just be quick to say, I want a new norm. I can't because again, norm, normal is defined as conforming with an acceptable standard or norm average. Do you want to, do you want to look forward to a new average? Again, no one wants to be average. We, we want to excel. We want to, we want to do well. And so letting go of the old norms. And again, I want to just state that just because you are used to, the way things were doesn't make the way things were normal. For you, it may be. For another person, it may not be. So this is the perfect time to invite the Holy Spirit into our lives. And, and, and through being a student of the promises of God's word to allow that inward work of the Holy Spirit to tr um, do a complete transformation of the way we think and, and to elevate our thinking, to elevate our expectations and, and our outlooks on life and, and, and inviting the kingdom of God principles into our lives to help us govern our lives. So, so personally, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm tired of normal. I've been tired of normal. Uh, I'm tired of traditions, man-made traditions and routines that are just average I'm tired of doing church in a normal way. I'm tired of doing family life in a normal way. I'm tired of just uh, everything that we're doing, uh, whether it be school, whether it be work, whether it be church, just anything that's normal is just so average and it's so plain. And yes, I did say I was tired of doing church as normal. And uh, that may shock you, but I may remind you as well that many of you have been tired of church as normal as well. That's why you could miss weeks in a row and not ain't miss it because it was just so bland to you or so whatever the situation may be. Matter of fact, some people have just now discovered after seven weeks that we're not meeting corporately. They go, oh, <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> well, it happened a few weeks ago and I'm glad you're finally on board, but we'll be back real soon. And for you, we can be back to normal. So my point being, I'm not being, crit I, I am being critical, but I'm being critical of myself as well as church work, homework, marriage, vocation, school, whatever it may be, when we're stuck in normal, I don't think that's something we should be talking about going back to the way it was, nor should we just be talking about new norms, because again, the word normal is just so bland, it's so mediocre, it's so average, and I think we can do better, and this is a perfect opportunity. We can seize the moment, and we can uh, draw near to God and invite the Holy Spirit into our lives and just really help us develop positive 
thought patterns that are thinking on a higher level, thinking more on a, on a God level. I know the prophet Isaiah said, that, you know, speaking of God, he said, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And, but that doesn't mean that we can't be thinking like that because in, 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 with, the, with the new birth experience, we have been invited into the, the kingdom of God and, and, and Christ has come to dwell in us. We're born again. We're new creations created in the very image and likeness of God. Therefore, we can begin to cooperate with him and worship him and fellowship with him on a much higher level. In second, uh, excuse me, in first Corinthians, the second chapter, first Corinthians, the second chapter, verse nine and 12. It says, that is what the scriptures mean when they say, no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit, for the spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except the person's own spirit, and no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit, and we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. So we can see as a result of having the spirit of God abiding within us, we can know, and God is interested in us knowing what his thoughts are, what his plans are. And God's thoughts and God's plans are never normal. They, there's nothing vanilla about it. There's nothing mediocre about it. There's nothing average about it. Uh, I, I, I love the verse in Ephesians 3.20, you know, in chapter 3 of, of Ephesians, where it's talking about being established in the love of God. And it closes out the chapter by reminding us that, that, that in Christ and that with God, that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we can even ask or imagine. So in our wildest imaginations and in our, in our greatest thoughts, God is even able to exceed all that. But that doesn't mean that we can't think higher on a higher level. So let's focus on elevating our thoughts to become more like God's thoughts rather than man's thoughts, that they become um, way beyond average, that they become excellent rather than just average, and that they're not conformed to this world. In Romans chapter 12, in verse 2, we're told not to copy the behaviors and the customs of this world, but to let God transform you into a new person, transforming us into a new person by changing the way that we think, changing the way that we think. Now, this is written to born again Christians. And so it's important that we have experienced the born again experience. We've experienced receiving Christ into our lives. We've experienced the reality of becoming a new creation in Christ. But it's still our responsibility that now that we are in Christ, that we no longer allow ourselves to be conformed to this world, but that we go through the process of transformation and that we are transformed into a new person and relying God to do it. He doesn't say transform yourself. There's a lot of self-help books and a lot of self-help self -help teachings, positive attitudes, those things can be very helpful as long as things are working well and, and having a, a good positive attitude is certainly beneficial as long as things are going well that you can remain positive. But ultimately, the best thing to do is, is to experience transformation by the Holy Spirit and thinking new thoughts, elevating our thought life as a result of being transformed in our innermost being. So let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, elevating our thoughts. What are we thinking on? What, what, what is the predominant thought that we're thinking of when we're not really thinking about anything? Again, what's the predominant thought that you find yourself or thoughts that you are thinking about when you're in that mode where you say, well, I'm not really thinking about anything, but you are thinking about something. You just don't think you're thinking about anything, but you are thinking about something. Ask yourself, what are my predominant thoughts when I'm not really thinking about anything? And are they God thoughts? Are they good thoughts? Do they need to be elevated? 
And if you find yourself constantly thinking negative thoughts, fearful thoughts, mediocre thoughts, average thoughts, you know, you, you want to get busy with saying, no, that's not acceptable. That's normal. Everyone thinks those thoughts. Well, that's fine. Everyone may think those thoughts, but I'm not everyone. I'm a child of God, and I am going to elevate my thinking by my life being transformed, and God bringing transformation into my life by changing the way I think. So God's prompting us. He's prompting you to change the way you think. This season that we're in, with things having been closed down and we have, we have more discretionary time on our hands, please don't waste it. Don't let it go to waste. As things begin to open up again, you know, my, my biggest frustration would be, let's say we get into November, December, and uh, everything's in full swing again, and I take inventory of my life. I look into the mirror. I take some reflection time, and it's the same as it was back in January. Nothing changed, nothing improved. It's still normal. I don't want normal. I don't want average. It can be far better than that, and you can do far better than that. And so take the time. You have the time now, more so than ever. Often we'll say, well, I'm just so busy. I don't have Devo time. I'm so busy. I don't have reflection time. I'm so busy. I don't have time for God. I'm so busy. I don't have uh, time to reflect. Well, you have the time now. Take the time and, and, and make good use of the time and, and invite God into your life and allow the Holy Spirit to do a work in your heart and allow God to bring about the transforming power of the Holy Spirit through the grace of God by changing the way you think. And that would be to begin thinking on a higher level. You cannot move into a new season of life. You cannot move into a higher level of life with an old mentality. You don't want to keep thinking the same thoughts and expect things to change. And because if you keep thinking the same thing, you're going to be speaking the same thing. You're going to be acting the same way. Nothing has changed. So in Romans 12, again, in verse 2 from the New Living Translation, don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. Again, I want to emphasize that it's God doing the transformation. You cannot transform yourself. The invitation is to cooperate with God, to yield to God, invite him into the process, and he'll do, it, he'll do the transformation. You be the student, you be the disciple, and allow him to work in you, and you begin by changing the way that you think. So you want to be entering in this process of elevating your thinking by, number one, allow God to transform you by changing your thought life, changing the way you think. Scripture is replete with admonitions to think on those things that are good, things that are pure, things that are lovely, um, praiseworthy, and think on those things. And in, in 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter tells us that love thinks no evil. It thinks the best. It hopes the best. So again, those are thought processes that, are, that, that we are responsible for, that we're to live soberly. We're to have all our faculties in, in under the submission of the Holy Spirit. And we are commanded in the Word of God to allow that transformation to take place by changing the way that we're thinking. So you catch yourself in a, in a negative mode, being cynical. You catch that. You just make that commitment that, no, I'm not going to be thinking on those things. I'm, I'm choosing to think on the things that are good, things that are pure, things that are praiseworthy. Again, what do you think on when you're not really thinking about anything? You may be sitting on the sofa and just having, you're, you're just vegging out. You're just chilling. Think I'm just going to take some time here to veg out. And, and, but you're thinking about something. That's the real test. What are you thinking about in those moments? Is it good? Is it evil? Is it life-giving? Is it life-sustaining? And does it need to be elevated? And most likely we can all say an affirmative, yes, my thoughts need to be elevated when I'm in that mode where I'm not really thinking about anything, but I am thinking. So let's elevate those thoughts. Invite God into it. Allow him to transform. This must, and this must be a work of God's grace in you. It's much more than just making a mental commitment to changing. 
Mental commitments to change are good. Turning over a new leaf. We have that every year, you know, New Year's resolutions. And, you know, they, they don't have any lasting sustainability to them. But when the Spirit of God does the transforming work in us, that really begins to elevate our thoughts and brings us into a new way of thinking and a new way of living. This will require a commitment to the work of the Holy Spirit within you, but that's the Holy Spirit's assignment. Have you ever been given an assignment at your place of employment or even as a student in school, you've been given an assignment, but then you're not allowed to do it? There's no cooperation with other people. The Holy Spirit has been given an assignment. He came from heaven to earth to dwell in us, and his assignment is to lead us to show us things that are yet to come, to remind us of things that we need to be reminded of. So he has an assignment. It's his responsibility to be working in and through us, to empower us, to be witnesses in all the world. That's his assignment is to empower me. But if I don't invite him and I don't allow him to empower me, I just kind of squelch and say, no, no, you just, you know, just stay off to the side here. I'll call on you when I need you or, you know, not allowing him to do his assignment. So invite him in to do his assignment and he will help you in the process of elevating your thinking. And, and over time, as you continue to invite him in and allow him to be leading you, guiding you, teaching you all things, showing you things that are yet to come, bringing to your remembrance things that you need to be remembering that over a period of time, you will, you will begin to recognize that your, your, your thinking has been elevated to a new level. And again, we never arrive at this, but we always have work to do to keep thinking on a, on a, on, on more of a, on a higher level, on a God level. So I want to leave you today with Ephesians chapter four. It's just a great, it's a great starting place to empower you, to equip you in this process of elevating our thinking and, and, and raising it up and ridding ourselves of the mentality of uh, I can't wait for the new norm. I can't wait to get back to norm. Just banish that from your vocabulary. I'm sure if you really stop and think about it, you don't want to go back to the way things were. You're looking forward to something, but not a new norm. You're looking forward to elevated thinking. You're looking forward to some encounters with the Holy Spirit of God leading you, guiding you, doing things that are beyond your comprehension, beyond what you can even ask or imagine. God has some exciting things in store for us. And I, I, and I believe that as we'll take, seize the moment, take advantage of this time that we have to really purpose to hear from God, that he will cooperate with us. So back to Ephesians chapter four, let me read, uh, begin ver I'll begin reading at verse 17. It says, with the Lord's authority, again, this is from the New Living Translation. It says, with the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles, for they are hopelessly confused. So you don't want to go back to that norm. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life of God because they have closed their minds and, and hardened their hearts against him. Don't harden your mind. Be open. Verse 19. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. Then it goes into giving us instruction here on elevating our thoughts in verse 20. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off, throw off the sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. So we're putting off the old. Then the next verse in verse 23, it says, instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts, your thoughts and your attitudes. Throw off the old way of thinking, the normal way of thinking, the mediocre way of thinking and allow the Holy Spirit to renew your thoughts and your attitudes. In verse 24, it says, put on your new nature to Create it to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So we have, are invited into participating with God in the new birth experience. 
Scriptures remind us, uh, uh, instruct us that in John 3, 16, that God so loved us that he sent his only son into the world that whoever would believe on him would not perish but of everlasting life. We've been invited into that everlasting life into believing that Jesus is the son of God, believing that he died at the cross to forgive us of our sins, to redeem us from our old nature. We've been given the word. We've been given the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're we are instructed in the word of God that we're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. All things have been made brand new. Now take advantage of it and invite the Holy Spirit into this process of renewing your thinking to be elevated into a new way of thinking and go beyond the word normal. Just, just take it out of your vocabulary. <laughs> And I, I know it's a word that we hear a lot today, but let's, let's just think beyond that and let's, let's go far beyond average and conformity to the things of this world and allow the Holy Spirit to elevate us to a new place. You may be hearing this today and you may be saying, but I've never experienced that life in Christ. I never experienced that being made a new creation. The good news is, is that that's already been dealt with by God through Jesus if you believe that Jesus is the son of God, you believe that in your heart, you sense it in your heart that it's true. The Bible tells us that with the heart one believes and with the math confession is made resulting in salvation. So I wanna invite you into just uh, accepting that today and, and, and we call it a, the prayer unto salvation. And so if that's speaking to your heart today, I wanna to just take this moment right now and I'm gonna lead you in a prayer. You pray this prayer and you mean it from your heart and you confess it with your mouth, you'll come into this new birth experience and you too can participate in, in your thoughts being elevated to a much higher level and to begin thinking God thoughts. So let's pray this together. Join with me if you would. And if this is your first time, we'd love for you to contact us and just let us know. We have some resources we'd love to share with you. So let's go ahead and pray together. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe with all my heart that Jesus is your son, that he came to the cross and he shed his blood to cleanse me of my sin. I believe that you raised him again from the dead and with my mouth, I confess today, Jesus as my Lord and my savior. It's in Jesus name I pray this, amen. Welcome to the family of God being a new creation. Again, contact us. We'd love to resource you with some more material and, and just hear about the good news. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day and we will see you all real soon. God bless you.